hard to be an American the last four or five years. Because every time we turn around, something horrible happens. Something horrible happens to some group of people. And how do we deal with that? How do we respond to the horrible things that happen? Well, one of the things as Christians we're invited to do is to turn to Scripture to find answers. And yet today when we turn to the scripture, we wonder who this is. This isn't the Jesus I know and love. This isn't the Jesus that I decided to follow. This isn't the Jesus that I like. This Jesus makes me uncomfortable. What do we do with the passage of scripture we have today? In this scripture, Jesus has just had his confrontation with the Pharisees and scribes and talked about what makes a person clean. He has just said out loud to everybody, there is nothing that goes into your body that can make you unclean. It's what's coming out of you that makes you unclean. What comes out of you and then he finds a house to rest in for the night. Some people argue that Jesus must have been an introvert, because every time there's a big event, he seeks out a mountain to calm himself down, right? To have some alone time. And so he had just finished healing all the people on the other side of the lake in Gennesaret. And so he wove his way to Tyre, and there, in that house, comes a woman. So I can't figure out if Jesus is just racist or if he's sexist and racist together in this passage. Maybe he's xenophobic. But in this passage of scripture, when he is tired and trying to rest, a foreign woman, a Seraphonician origin. So that means she's Greek, right? A Greek woman, a foreigner for this land, comes and kneels down at his feet and begs him to heal her daughter. And he calls her the B word. It doesn't say that in your Bible because they cleaned it up and just translated it as little dog. But the connotation is the B word. Because in, when we think of dogs, we think of pets. We think of animals that are cute and cuddly and come with us and go everywhere we do. We think of animals that are part of our family. In the Middle East at this time, dogs weren't pets. Dogs only got scraps from the table that they begged from people. They were seen as scavengers and in the way and dirty and unclean because they were constantly trying to get something to eat. And the word here is the female version of the description of those kind of dogs. So did Jesus intend that? So you heard throughout your life, a million sermons that told you that Jesus was just trying to make a point. That he didn't really mean to be mean to her. He didn't really mean to call her name. He was just trying to teach a larger point that we needed to remember it's what comes out of our mouths that makes us unclean. He wanted to remind us that everybody is welcome in the kingdom of God. But if you read this passage, whether you can read the B word or not in the passage, it is not a nice description of Jesus. He is angry. He calls her rude names. He is very rude to her. This is not the Jesus that we see who who looks at those who are different from him, right? Who looks at the poor, who looks at those who have been left out of society and welcomes them in and heals them. This is the Jesus 
that when someone touched him and was healed, he looked at her and called her daughter. This Jesus looks at this foreign woman and says, my job isn't to help you. I'm not here to bring good news to you. I'm not here to share the gospel with you. I'm not here to change your world. What would you do at that point? How would you respond? Me. I would probably be full of tears and flee the scene, right? I would get out of there as quick as I could. But that's not what this woman does. This woman lets those awful words wash over her. And then she says, sir. So she gives him an honor of Sir, even the dogs deserve crumbs. What happened to Jesus then? Because this scripture makes us think about our Christology, right? Was Jesus really fully human? Did Jesus respond the way we did sometimes? And if Jesus is really fully human, then that means Jesus made mistakes. That Jesus was capable of learning and changing his mind. Sir, even the dogs deserve crumbs. In this passage of scripture, the Savior the Redeemer, the person who changes the world is the foreign woman. Because she's the one who speaks God's word. She's the one who lets the word be known. She's the one who says that everyone deserves to be part of the kingdom of God. Everyone deserves a place at the table. Everyone deserves to be invited and welcomed, everyone should participate. Jesus learned from this encounter. Jesus hears the woman, sees her pain, and that ugliness that we just saw, that rudeness, that xenophobia, that racism, that sexism in Jesus, is changed. He heals her daughter. And we know that Jesus is changed because of the next scriptures that we'll be reading in the following weeks, where Jesus then decides that if this is true, if God's kingdom is for everyone, then he will go out into the areas that aren't Israel and spread the word. As I've been thinking about this scripture all week, who are the people that we don't want to even give crumbs to? Who are the people that we don't even want to think about? Because over this week, we learned that Texas has passed a number of laws. One of those laws tells teachers how they can teach in the classroom and what they can say. And particularly, when it got to one of the school boards down at the lower level, the school board, when sharing examples of what you could and could not teach to the teachers, said, to a librarian. If you have a book about the Holocaust in your classroom, you need to have a book on the other side. I just want to ask you all, what other side? What is the other side of the Holocaust? 
There is no other side. Killing millions of Jewish people is wrong. There is no side that can justify the killing of all of those Jewish people, of all of those disabled people, of all of those gay people. There is no other side. So what do we do? We keep having this news over and over again that tells us from different groups of people in our country that it is okay to treat someone worse. To even change history so that we don't have to tell the truth of history. Because if you read the list of all the things that said in Texas that you couldn't teach, it had speeches of George Washington, it had speeches of Thomas Jefferson, it had whole sections that were left out of our history. Like it was okay to talk about the Civil Rights Act, but it wasn't okay to talk about the Voting Rights Act. How can we get back to seeing ourselves as one people? As a people that truly believes that all are welcome into this country. That that Statue of Liberty that said, bring me your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to be free, was true, was real, was who we wanted to say we are. But we have become so concerned with our different camps that we cannot see when something is blatantly wrong. When you say to a librarian that there's a book on the other side of the Holocaust, you've just lost it. There is no coming back from that. How do we change a decision that impacts how future children look at a destructive event that killed so many people. And if that wasn't enough, did you know they're still fighting at the border about whether to enforce all the policies that made sure that immigrants couldn't get into the country? Especially the one that uses the law that says, well, they could possibly have COVID, so because they could possibly have COVID, they need to stay in Mexico. They cannot ask for asylum on this side of the border. My insides see those rules saying to the people at our borders, you don't deserve to be fed. You don't deserve a place at the table. Because our job is to feed our people. But here's the thing. Jesus changed his mind. Jesus realized. Realized that the words he had been saying about hypocrisy and how you were to live your life, the words that he had said to the religious folk of his day about what makes you an unclean person, those words, he had just broken all those words. And he's transformed. He's transformed in this passage. He's a God who learns. A God who changes. A God who, when faced with something new, learns and grows and creates a world where everyone is welcome. That everyone is at the table. How do we look at the world and see those spots and those moments, those people, and ask the question about crumbs. When we look at God, do we say you don't even deserve a crumb? Or do we look at them and breathe?
break a loaf of bread, knowing that there is enough for everyone. Amen.